the ancient city of Nineveh is a symbol of power, wealth, and influence. Yet, if you look at the book of Nahum, it tells a narrative of divine judgment. Divine judgment from God against this great city. We are now in chapter 3 of Nahum. It declares the certainty of Nineveh's judgment, Nineveh's impending doom, because of their sin and because of God's wrath against them. So we will study this passage. Um, may we be reminded. So basically, at ang lesson ane, that we will be reminded of the unchanging nature of divine judgment and the certainty of judgment against those who persist in unrepentant sin and the enduring faithfulness of God toward His people, the Israelites, as well as to us. So hopefully by the end of the sermon, we will have an appreciation and reverence for God's sovereignty over nations and individuals alike. So we're now in the third chapter of the book of Nahum. In this chapter, um, Nahum gave three bases for the certainty of God's judgment against Nineveh. Nga no sure na silutan ang Nineveh. There are three bases. First is because of their sin, from verses 1 to 7. Second, just as no Ammon, verses 8 to 13, and despite their strength, verses 14 to 19. So we will discuss one by one. So let's go to uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Woe to the city of bloodshed, completely full of deception and pillage. Her prey never departs. Pagka alaot, sa siyudad nga napuno sa dugo napuno kini sa pagpamakak o pagpangawat sa kaptangan ang mga biktima anaa kanunay kaniya so you can see here makita nato sa verse 1 gilista ni Nahum ang mga sala ng mga Ninevites so they are shedding blood they are lying profiteering their victims are always there and they never departs so the first word is woe Woe, um, well, actually, this is not precisely, sa English language, woe is parang curse, di ba? Pero sa Hebrew, it is an expression of agony. Parang very painful ni Nahum na makita ang vision na gihatag ni Lord sa Nahum. This is a woe miracle, woe miracle, so it, is, it, is, it contains prophetic things to come. Remember, kanin si, kanin vision ni Nahum, gihatag ni Lord kaniya uh, several years, the uh, pila ka tuig na before sa nahitabo. Okay, this is a pro prophetic vision from the Lord. So wala pa nahitabo, gihatag ni Lord telling or foretelling what will happen to Nineveh. Sabi na, first one, Nineveh is a city of bloodshed. Unsay pa sabot ng city of bloodshed? So the ancient city of Nineveh was bloodthirsty. Daghan gipagpatay, sobrang grabe ang murderous um Kasi ang, ang capital sa, ng Nineveh is Assyria. Uh, right now, there's no more Assyria. Uh, it forms part of the modern-day modern Iraq. So, this Assyria was full of violence and bloodshed. For example, kablaba mo, sa palahon sa una, sa mga Assyrians, they will putlo nilang ulo o makamot sa mga kaaway nila. They will behead, their, behead them, cut their hands, and they will impale them on a stick. Parang, parang lechon sa lubot. Yun. Impale nila and then i-display ang mga lawas sa mga kasada. That is how brutal they were. And we all know, diba, ang warfare, there's no, syempre pag gera yan, syempre uh, violent, violence, dagang kay mga violence. Pero uh, during that time, in the ancient Near East, ang Assyria number one in terms of violence and bloodshed. And the purpose of them, uh, why so much bloodshed, is to cause fear on other people, so that no one would want to rebel against them. So they inflict fear on the people that they invade. And then, number two, Nineveh was completely full of deception. So, grabe ang deception, so um, sige sila pamakak. Ang discarte nila, the, the, the way they conduct their politics is full of deception. For example, if you recall in Second Kings chapter 16, King Ahaz, he, uh, he's a uh, king of Israel, uh, uh, he asked for help from the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria initially helped him, but eventually 
later on, the king of Assyria attacked him. So, ganun ka deceiving ang mga Assyrians. So, kuwan sila. Uh, they will make peace, makipag-treaty sila sa ilang mga kaaway, and then later on, they will attack their enemies. And then, uh, they are completely full of deception and pillage. In other translation, plunder. Meaning, di ba, uh, during ancient times, they will invade other nations, invade nila, and then uh, kawato nila yung mga gamit nila, plunder. Um, and the plunder is so great kasi during the height of the Assyrian Empire, they, they controlled the Middle East from North Africa to Iran. Ganun, inanakadako ang Assyrian Empire. And everywhere they go, dagan sila gipang hut-hut na mga gold, silver, etc. So, gipang kawatan niya, nila, nila ang mga lugar nga ilang giokupahan. And then, uh, her prey never departs. So, gidescribe ang Assyria, mura siya o sa leon na, na always hand for weaker prey. So, daghan na biktima ang Assyria. So, moto, suko ang ginoo sa mga Assyrians. Grabe sila kadaotan. And then, verse 2, the sound of the whip. Okay, verse 2 and verse two to verse 3, it describes the assault of the city. Nakita ni, ni Nahum, giunsa, giunsa pag-atake ng kaaway ang Assyria. Ito yung description niya. The sound of whip and the sound of the rumbling of the wheel, galloping horses and bounding chariots. Verse 3, horsemen charging and swords flaming and spears flashing. Apan karon adunay kasaba sa mga paglatigo o ang tingog sa mga ligid nga nagtuyok, nagdagan nga mga kabayo o nag-untol-untol nga kar- mga karwahe. Adunay mga tawong nagkabayo nga misulong, nagpangidlap sa mga espada, nagsinaw-sinaw nga mga bangkaw. So this is very descriptive. What is it sabot ane? Eh? So gidescribe ni Nehum ang iyang nakita na na nilusong ang mga kaaway laban sa Assyria. Okay? So, uh, Nehum was describing the assault on the Assyrian city. So, ito yung mga vivid uh, images. And then, uh, then, many slain, a mass of corpses, and there is no end to dead bodies. They stumble over the dead bodies. Daghan ang minatay, nagtipon og ang mga lawas, Dili maihap ang mapatay nga lawas, ang ilang mga kaaway na nga pandol diha kanila. So nakita ni Nehom na ang mga Asinas, di ba mga dautan na sila, gipangpatay sila ng ilang mga kaaway. So this is God's judgment against Assyria. Kay brutal sila, di ba, they inflict pain to, to so many people, then the time is coming that ang mga Asinas sa mismo ang atakihon and daghan ang mamatay sa ilaha. Okay, and then, as John Calvin puts it, all these things, uh, by the way, you may be wondering, why did, uh, why did uh, Nehum have to describe what happened to the Assyrians? Bakit hindi lang ingon na one sentence, daghan na matay? Ngano kailangan i-describe pa, pa ni Nehum ang mahitabo sa ilaha? Well, I think the purpose here is to encourage the Israelites. Remember, the Israelites were suffering. They were suffering under the hands of, Assyri- of the Assyrians. So, gihatag ang description on say mahitabo sa mga Assyrians aron maligon o, 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 o ma-encourage ma- ang mga Israelites na ang ilang kalisod na ay hangganan. No? God is going to take revenge against their enemies, against the Assyrians, and God is going to destroy the Assyrians. So, pag madungog ng mga Israelites, kani ang mahitabo ng mga Assyrians, they will be encouraged. Ah, muabot agad ang panahon ninyo, nakamuna pod ang mapilde. Di ba? So here, uh, God's word came to Nahum to serve as encouragement to the people so that they will not be encouraged, they will know that the time will come that God is going to defeat their enemy. So yon. So it serves as an encouragement. And in verse 4, ingon ni Nahum, all of this because of the many harlotries of the harlot, the charming one, the mistress of sorceries, who sells nations by her harlot trees and families by her sorceries. Kini nahitabo tungod sa unod nung mga buhat sa mga maanyag nga nagbaligya sa ilang dungog o ang hanas sa paggamit o sa lamangka. So what do you mean by this one? O nagbaligya sa kanasoran pinaagi sa iyang pagkabigaon. O tungod kaniya ang katawhan nagabuhat o sa lamangka. 
unsay pa sabot ani so nagingon si Lord God is going to judge Nineveh because of uh, because it is a sorceress and a whore a prostitute harlot a harlot and a sorceress so why did God describe Assyria as a sorceress and a whore because during uh, ancient Near East time during those times um, cities ang mga siyudad ipang describe ng babae parang parang karon di ba Manila di ba her di ba motherland so usually mga cities countries babae yan so uh, and and and, uh, and in the perspective of the Israelites ang perspective nila ang mga daotang mga babae mostly mga prostitutes and sorcerers kala ang pinaka daotan na pwede nimo i-describe sa mga daotan ng babae prostitutes and sorcerers and that's why God described Assyria as a sorceress and a prostitute. Okay? Sorceress and prostitute. Kasi si Nineveh, during that time, kabuluma mo, they are engaged in slavery. They, na sila yung mga ulipon, uh, they, they i, i, enslave nila, and then ibaligya nila human trading, human trafficking. So, ganun kadautan ang mga Assyrians. And then, sabi na, oh, who sells nations by her harlot trees? So, Gipang baligya nila ang mga tao nga gipang enslave nila. And then, they are sorcerers. Bakit niya tawag na uh, sorcerer ang Assyria? Because they worship foreign gods. Diba? They, they worship gods, mga Diyos-Diyos. They worship God of greed and power. And do you know, uh, recently, yung archaeology nag-dig up and then nakita nga these Ninevites would practice sorcery. They would practice, practice magic, magic arts as a way of life. So, demonic. So, very demonic ang mga Assyrians. That is why, even sa warfare, they would, they would kill people so brutally because of demonic influence. Mga ni Lord, these Assyrians, these Ninevites, they are sorcerers, no? harlots, prostitutes. That's why I'm going to destroy them. Okay? And then, what happened? So, verse 5 to verse 7, uh, this time, God is talking. God is talking. God is pronouncing judgment. Sabi ni Lord, Behold, I am against you, declares Yahweh of hosts. Tanawa, makigbatok ako kanimo, kini ang gisulti ni Yahweh nga makagagahom. So, ningon si Yahweh, ako mismo ang ang uh, ang papatay sa inyo. Parang ako mismo, ako mismo ang mubatok kanimo. Dili ang yang anghel, pero siya mismo. So makita na to ganun nakagrape ang kasalanan ng Assyria ng Ninevites na ang Diyos na mismo ang siyang maghataw og punishment sila magpataw og punishment. So very scary, no? It's the Lord who will exercise judgment against this uh, city of Nineveh. And then from verse 5, God declares five ways to expose the grave sins of Nineveh. Unsay buhaton ni Lord para ma-expose ang mga kasalanan ng mga Ninevites. Okay, number one, sabi na, I will uncover your skirts over your face. Akong pagawalison ang imong palda. So, unsay pasabot na eh. Well, uh, the point of the Lord is He is going to expose the evil, the evilness of Nineveh. Okay? So, Nineveh will not hide anymore. Ipakita niya ang true colors ng mga Ninevites. And then second, and show to the nations your nakedness. O ipakita ang imong tinaguang bahin ngadto sa kanasoran. And to the kingdoms, your disgrace. Ngadto sa kanasoran, maulawan ka ngadto sa mga gingharian. So the Lord is going to expose Nineveh aron maulawan siya. Maulawan siya sa uban mga nasod. So God is going to expose the nakedness of Nineveh. If you remember yung mga diba, stories, mga, mga politicians, diba? they are caught, they are caught criminal act, diba? Gi, diba, usually media will take coverage of them and then expose ang ilang ipang buhat. So, ganito na mahitabo, once Nineveh will fall, God is going to expose the sins of Nineveh to all the nations. Okay? And, kabalo mo, in ancient times, ang mga parusa sa mga prostitutes is they will going to sh- shame them publicly. They're going to 
uh, expose them publicly para maulawan ang mga prostitutes. And the same way, God is going to do the same thing to Nineveh. Iyang ipaulawan ang Ninevites sa ilang mga ipangbuhat para makita sa tibok kalibutan unsa kadautan sila. And then sabi na, verse 6, I will throw detestable filth on you. Uh, Pasabot na, mulabay si Lord o ngilid, lahugaw sa mga Assyrians. Diba, makita mo, ganun kasgalit si Lord sa mga Assyrians and display you as a wicked fool and set you up as a spectacle. Uh, and then sabi na, o mahimo kang mangilad, himuon ko ikaw nga talan-awon sa tanan. Because during the time, ang nin- mga Ninevites, whenever they capture na si makaaway, ilang paulawon ilang makaaway. They will expose, they will uh, torture them, they will subject their enemies to public ridicule. And then, ingon ni Lord, ang imong gipangbuhat sa imong kaaway, mahitabo po ninyo. I'm going to set you up as a spectacle so that people will look at you. So, the point here is, nga nung gihimo man ni Lord ni Tanan, gusto ni Lord para, uh, para maulawon ang Ninevites. So, God wanted to humble Nineveh. And so that all the nations will see how evil it is. So, makita na to, uh, what can we learn from here? We can see that sin, uh, uh, I mean, God will eventually expose all sins. There is no sin that could be hidden. The time will come that God is going to expose them. And then, syempre, kabuluta, ang kasalanan, pag na-expose na yun, nakahibalo, na unsa imong gibuhat, maulawan ka. In the same way, God will do that to the Ninevites. Then, verse 7, And it will be that all who see you will flee from you and say, Nineveh is devastated. Who will console her? her? Where will I seek comforters for you? Mabot ang panahon nga mulikay ang tanang mutan aw kanimo ug moingon. Naggunob na ang Nineve. Kinsa ba ang muhilak alang kaniya? Asa man ako makakita ug tawo nga muhupay kanimo. So sa verse 7, gi describe ni Nehom unsay mga reaksyon sa uban nasod once na, na, na once Nineve fell. So how will the world react? So Verse 7, makita na to, wal, wala, wala na pake ang uban nasod. Other nations will feel no compassion for this city because this city is so evil. Diba? On top of your head, buti na nga, buti nga sa inyo. Diba? Buti nga sa inyo. Kung baga, uh, no one will mourn, walay muhilak sa Nineveh kay sila mismo naging biktima ng, cru, ng, ng pagkabrutal ng mga Ninevites. That's why uh, the time will come when Assyria will fall and nobody will mourn for them. Nobody will comfort, nobody will care anymore. Diba? Remember, pa, 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 just imagine, usa ka tao na grabe ka, kasama, no? Once mapatay siya, or ma- madakpan siya, walay mo maluoy kanina, no? Ganun din mahitabo sa Assyria. Because, uh, because of how brutal they are, nobody will care, nobody will mourn for them. Okay. So, Nahum provides for, diba sabi ko, three bases of the certainty of judgment. The first one is because of their persistent sin. Because of their sin. Yung harlotry, the sin of bloodshed, uh, plunder, etc., etc. The second b- base, basis why God will pronounce judgment on Nineveh is this. Uh, just as no Ammon or Thebes. Okay, basahin nato sa verse 7. By the way, kaning no Ammon, no Ammon is another word for Thebes. Thebes was the capital of Egypt during the time. Capital ng Egypt. Unsay na ni Tebes? Well, si Tebes, uh, it was a powerful city, pero unsay na itabo? Napildi siya. Ang mga, mga Tebes, Garbopod, pero napildi sila sa ilang kaaway. So, eto, from verse 8 to 13, uh, God asked the Assyrians to consider what happened to Tebes or no Ammon. The purpose of Nahum is not to convince the Assyrians to repent, but to show them the certainty of God's judgment. Sure na giyod, may tabo ni siya, bisa usap pa mo, ka-powerful, doesn't matter because God is going to attack and destroy you. Okay, sabi sa verse 8, Are you better than no Ammon who sits along the waters of the Nile with water surrounding her whose rampart was the sea, whose wall consisted of the sea? 
Ninebe, mas labaw pa ba ikaw kaysa sa Tebes nga nakatukod sa suba, sa nilo, nga nalibutan siya og tubig, nga ang nanalipod mao ang lawod, nga ang pader ni ini mao ang dagat? So, unsay pasabot ni Nehom? Nehom is telling the Syrians, are you better than Noamon or, Te- or Tebes? So, it's a rhetorical question, meaning you are not better than Egypt. Kasi dur- during that time, Egypt, nindot yung water system nila, it will serve as their defense mechanism. So, defense niya, Tebes was a capital, they were so secure in 663 BC. 663 BC, they relied on the defenses. For them, akala nila, they have very strong defenses. Because during the time, Tebes was very powerful in 663 BC. But eventually, Tebes fell. Napildi sila. So, ang point ni Lord, no matter how powerful or how strong that nation is, the time will come that it will eventually fall. And then in verse 9, Ethiopia was her might and Egypt too without end. Put and Lubim were among her helpers. Ang Ethiopia o ang Hipto mao ang iyang kusog o kini walay kinutuban. Ang Put o ang Libya mao ang iyang kabahin. Sipo sa batane. So sabi ni Nehom, oh Assyria, parehas ba mo sa Tebes? Remember, Tebes has natural fortification, meaning uh, nindot ang yang terrain, it would serve as defense. Pero parehas ba mo sa Tebes? And then, ma- may pa sa Tebes, dagan siya mga amigo, marami siya mga allies, like Tebes has Ethiopia, Egypt, Put, and Lubim. Ang point, point ana is, kamo wala mo'y kakampi, pero si Tebes na'y kakampi, pero napildi, kamo wala mo'y kakampi, so mapildi good mo. So that's the point. So what is this Ethiopia? Ang Ethiopia here is not the current day Ethiopia. Uh, it's a different place. Uh, Ethiopia or Kush, uh, during the time, it's called Kush. Uh, it forms the modern day Sudan. So Ethiopia here in verse 9 is the modern day Sudan. And then Egypt, uh, okay, we know where is Egypt. And then uh, Put is the modern, uh, it's part of Libya now. No? Put, Put is part of Libya. And Lubim is in Libya. Okay, that's just Libya. So all of these are allies of Tebes during the time. So, that's sila sa northwestern Africa. So, ito yung mga kakampi ni Tebes. But, despite that, napildi si Tebes. Pero kamo mga Assyrians, naman mo yung mga allies? Wala mo allies. Kamo kamo lang. So, here, the point of Nehom is that Tebes, although they were mighty, but in 663 BC, Tebes fell. They were destroyed by the Assyrians. And then, from verse 10, uh, gidescribe ni Nehom unsay nitabo sa Tebes. These are the horrors that happened to Tebes, which will also happen to Assyria. Okay, verse 10. Yet she became an exile, mga Tebes. She went into captivity. Also her infants were dashed to pieces at the head of every street. They cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were found with fetters. Apan ang Tebes, nabihag o na ulipon siya ang iyang gagmay mga kabataan gipang watas-watas diha sa likuanan sa mga dalan ang iyang mga kaaway nagripa alang sa iyang halangdon nga kalalakinan o gipang kadinahan ang tanan niyang mga bantogan nga tao so unsay pa sabot ani diba remember Tebes Tebes in Egypt very powerful sila 663 BC pero they became an exile ang exile pa sabot ana gipanglagpot ang mga citizens nila sa ibabaw lugar they went into captivity gipang uh, gipang dakop sila also her infants were dashed to pieces you know during uh, ancient near east war time you know yung mga babies ilang gipangpatay pati babies walang awa they will crash they will ipanglabay nila mga babies ang ilang mga ulo ipang panglabay sa mga sa yun, at the heads of every street why why do these people kill baby well ano ang purpose na is genocide so that uh, no future generation will take revenge di ba uh, if you spare the, those children syempre lalaki yan may galit yan di ba pag laki niyan so they will uh, rebel so what they do the practice during that time, they will kill even babies, women and children, 
so that so that yung mga tao mahadlok yun sa ila, no? That they will not think twice. They will not ever think of trying to rebel. So that's how brutal and in- inhumane during that time, no? Ang mga Syrians, ganun talaga ginagawa nila. And then they cast lots for their honorable men. Diba, remember, Tebes, diba, na may mga dagkong tao. So bisang dagkong tao ka nakiranggo sa society, bali wala ka. Because they will cast lots. Meaning, in cast lots is, they will, parang, uh, cast lots, parang ano, uh, how do you call that in Bisaya? Basta cast lots, para mahibaon niya, unsay buhaton sa imo ha, papatay ka ba, or wala. So, bisan, kwartahan ka during the time, bali wala. So, they will treat you as a common, commoner. So, yon. So, wala sila pakailan. Bisan, tiguang bata, ilang abusohon. Okay? And a great portion of Tebes were uh, captured and went into exile. Ang point ni Lord, unsa na hitabo sa Tebes, maupod ang mahitabo kaninyo. You will not be spared. Your children, your noblemen will be punished. Kung unsay gibuhat ninyo sa laing nasod, kanapod ang buhato na ako kaninyo, mga Ninevites. Sabi ni Lord, unsay na hitabo sa ibang nasod, sa imong mga biktima, mauti mahitabo ninyo. Sa so verse 11, sabi na, you too will become drunk. You will be hidden. You too will search for a strong defense from the enemy. Mahubog ka usab, ug musulay ka sa pagtago, ug magmangita ka usab, ug kataguan gikan sa imong kaaway. So, ingon ni Nehom, kamo mga Ninevites, mura mo mahubog, di ba? Manago mo, pero dili mo katago. Why? Because your enemies will find you out and destroy you. So, ang point ni Nehom Bisan unsaon yung pagtago, God is going to judge you, that God is going to punish you. Okay? There's no place to hide. And ang mga Ninevites, bisan unsa pagtago nila, madakot yapon sila sa ilang mga kaaway. So question, did this happen in real history? Nahitabo ba gini? Remember, kaning Book of Nahum, gihatag ni siya several years before nahitabo. No? Gitagaan warning ang mga Assyrians, siyempre, gahi ulo sila. So, gisulat, gisilutan sila ni Lord. But eventually, did this happen in history? Well, according to history, the ancient capital of Assyria, Ashur, fell in 614 BC. Ang nakapildi sa mga Ninevites is the combined forces of Medes and the Babylonians. The city collapsed. Uh, actually, the city was placed on siege three months. Kasi ang style sa una, they will siege the city. You cannot go out. So, magutom ang mga tao. And then after three months of siege, gipang sunog ang syudad. Okay? And then, uh, and then some of the Assyrians were able to retreat. Naka-retreat sila. Uh, and then, they put up a new king. And after two years, the remaining forces, again, were defeated by the Babylonians. Okay? And then later on, for the third attempt, the Assyrians joined forces with the Egyptians nakipaglaban ulit sila sa mga Babylonians and finally, napildi na yun sila in 605 BC. In fact, there is no Assyria right now. There's no kingdom of Assyria. Wala na. So, just as Nahum predicted, there is no place to hide. The Lord destroyed the Assyrian Empire. Wala na yun, Assyrian Empire after this one. And in verse 12, all your fortifications are fig trees with ripe fruit. When shaken, they fall into the eater's mouth. Ang tanan ni mong mga kuta, may sama sa kahoy nga igera, nga maupay pagkahinog. Kung uyugon kini, mga hulog kini, nga to sa bakba sa mukaon. You know, um, yung fig tree mang God, yung, actually we don't have fig tree, pero ang fig tree, kuha na siya, dili siya ligon, na konting ano mo lang, uyog mo lang, tagak na yung mga prutas niya. So, so ang point ni Nahum, ang inyong fortification, meaning your your defenses are so weak na konting uyog lang, mutagak na. Tagak na. That's the point. So, you should not rely on your source of security. You should not rely on your fortresses because your fortresses are so weak, even on the slightest touch, your, 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 your fortification will fall. Well, obviously, this is a hyperbole. No, hyper, mga sudyante alam niyo yun. Hyperbole, exaggeration. But the point is, yung defenses niyo very weak. So, 
Like I said, the armies of the Babylonians and Medes, they were able to destroy the capital city of Assyria in 612 BC. So, ang prediction ni Nahum, nahitabok yun. Okay? Because that is the word of God. Diba? Pag sinabi ni Lord, mahitabok yun. Okay, verse 13. Behold, your people are women in your midst. The gates of your land are open wide to your enemies. Fire consumes your gate bars. Tanawa ang katawahan nga anaa kanimong mga babahi. Ang ganghaan sa imong yuta abli kaayo alang sa imong mga kaaway gilamoy sa kalayo ang ilang mga rehas. Ano yung pasabot ni Nehom? Sabi na, ang imong mga tao, babahi. Di ba ang babahi, they are weak. So ang point ni Nehom, inong mga tanan mga Ninevites, murang babae na weak. So even the males are like women, they are so weak during that time, they cannot offer any strong defenses. Okay? So the Ninevites will be as weak as women. And then their gates, the gates na ilang syudad, open wide para makasulod ang ilang enemies. And then, sunugon. Fire consumes your gate bars. History says that the Medes and the Babylonians burned the capital city of Assyria. So makita na ito, grabe si Lord, no? Gihatag ni Lord ang word niya kang Nahum and then several years after, nahitabok yun. Okay, and then verse 14, from verse 14 to verse 19, Nahum gave the third basis for the certainty of judgment of Nineveh. Of Nineveh. Sabi ni, ni Lord, Nineveh will fall despite its strength. Remember, natumba ang Nineveh, it was not during the time na very weak sila, but during the time that they were very strong. Napildi sila sa ilang kaaway despite the fact that they were very strong. God is trying to put a point. Uh, God is show, trying to show a point. Na bisan unsa ka kusog ka, unsa ka kusgan ka, no matter how powerful you are, kung if the Lord is against you, He can destroy you. That's like what happened to Assyria. Okay, during the time when Assyria fell, they were strong. And it was the Medes and the Babylonians who destroyed them. Okay, uh, ito pa rin sabi ni Nahum. So, Nahum is trying to taunt. Parang gipang taunt niya si Assyria. Draw for yourself water for the siege. Why should they draw water for the siege? Di ba kasi ang during uh, ancient time warfare, ang buhato nila, they will siege the city. They will encamp the city so that nobody can go out and go in. And then they will cut off the water supply para ang mga tao sa sulod magutom o mauhaw and then mamatay. So sabi na, draw water for yourself. So mag, mag, i-gib na mo tubig pag andam kay there will be a siege. And second, strengthen your fortification. Liguna ninyo yung mga, mga parel. Uh, go into the clay and tread the mortar. Take hold of the brick mold. So ang, ang point ana, sige, pag andam mo, pag andam mo, because your enemies are coming. So Nehom was taunting Assyria for what will happen to them. Then verse 15, Then fire will consume you. The sword will cut you down. It will consume you as the locust does. Lamuyon ka dito sa kalayo, ug ang espada maoy mupukan kanimo. Pagalamuyon ka ni ini, ingon nga mga gagmay nga dulon nga mulamoy sa tanan. So, the point of Nahum is that despite all your preparations, your city will be burned with fire. And which is what happened in history. Nasunog ang uh, Nineveh. And then, uh, sabi na, the sword will cut you down, meaning the sword, uh, the sword will kill your people and it will consume you as the locust does. Diba ang locust? If you remember locust, grabe ang locust because uh, they will destroy everything. They will eat your crops, then wala na mabilin. So the point in Lord is that ang destruction ng Ninevites will be complete. They will be wiped out just like a locust horde passed through them. And then sabi niya, multiply yourself like the creeping locust. Multiply yourself like the swarming locust. Himua ng imong kaugalingon sama kadaghan sa gagmay ng mga dulon. Pagdaghan sama sa dagkong mga dulon. So, pasabot, Ana. So, yun nga, Nehom was taunting Asira. Sige, magpadaghan pa mo. Pa, mo. So, ang point is, 
wala mo'y mahimo bisan unsa kadaghan mo kung si Lord ang mo silot ninyo wala gid mo'y mahimo so bisan mo magpadaghan mo you cannot do anything to stop God's judgment and then verse 16 you have increased your traders more than the stars of heaven the creeping locust strips and flies away gipadaghan nimo ang imong mga tig baligya nga mas daghan pa kaysa mga bituon sa kalangitan apan sama sila sa gagmay nga mga dulon mangawat sila sa yuta ug unya mulupad palayo so what do you mean by this one so nehom was describing how uh, wealthy assyria was during the time dato kay ang assyria kay daghan kay mga traders daghan kay mga trade daghan kay mga negosyante sa lugar nila but Sabi na, the creeping locust strips and flies away. The destruction of God will be so thorough that there is nothing left. Parang di ba, locust? Grabe kayo, pag locust, wala gin mabilin. So, anak po, wala gin mabilin sa Nineveh. Lahat na gipanghago nila, lahat mga uh, uh, kwarta, mga mga nindot na butang, ma, makuha, mawala. Sa ilang, makuha sa ilang makaaway. Then, verse 17, the guardsmen, the guardsmen, the guard of the Assyrians are like swarming locusts. Your marshals are like locust swarm. Encamping in the stone walls on a cold day, the sun rises and they flee. And the place where they are is not known. Ang imo mga prinsipe sama kadaghan sa dagkong mga dulon o ang imo mga general sama sa ilang panon nga mitugdong sa mga pader sa adlaw nga ting bugnaw. Apan sa dihang mus mo sidlak ang adlaw manglupad sila ug wala usa nga nasayod kung asa sila si pasabot ani so the guardsmen and marshals are like parang gi describe ang mga guardia ang mga, inga, mga guardia mga general nimo mga sundalo ng mga Assyria mura sila mga locust di ba ang locust they will come and they will fly away so ang point ni Nehom pag abot sa mga inyong makaaway, ang mga general ninyo, bisan usa kadaghan sila, mul, mang, mul, uh, mulupad sila, muhawa sila. Ibig sabihin, muretreat sila. Biyaan nila ang ilang syudad. So the Lord is saying, this general of yours, although there are so many, they will run away. Muhadlok sila sa ilang kaaway, mudagan, mutalaw sila, mudagan. Biyaan nila ang syudad. So just like locusts, they will not provide an effective defense of your empire. So the point is, Lord, uh, you cannot rely on your strength. You cannot rely on your army. Kay ang mga army ni mo, sila mismo ang mudagan. Okay, and then verse 18. Your shepherds are sleeping, O king of Assyria. Your mighty ones are lying down. Your people are scattered on the mountains, and there is no one to regather them. Hari is Assyria. Ang imong magbalantay, nakatulog. Ang imong magmamando, nagpahulay, nagkatibulaag ang imong katawahan sa kabukiran, ug walay usa nga makatigom kanila. So makita ninyo, Nehom was addressing the king of Assyria. Unsay mes- mensahe ni Nehom sa as- king of Assyria? Sabi na, your shepherds are sleeping. Ang shepherds meaning your leaders, di ba? May mga leaders, mga kapitan, mga general they're sleeping, meaning, wala sila ipang buhat. They, they are not defending your city. Your mighty ones, your mighty soldiers are lying down. They are not doing anything to defend your city. And your people, they scattered. Nagdagan na yung mga tao ninyo. And then, nobody will regather them. Siyempre, if the people will run away, nobody will defend the city. That's why the, the, Nineveh, Nineveh, the uh, Nineveh will fall easily. Because, all of these people have run away. Yung mga, yung mga shepherds mo, mga military officers mo, mga general niyo, mga tapulan, nanago, natutulog sila, o king of Assyria. Okay? O king of Assyria. And then, uh, there is no relief. Okay, there is no relief for your breakdown. This is last verse. There is no relief for your breakdown. Your wound is incurable. All who hear the report about you will clap their hands over you. For on whom has not your evil passed continually? Walay mahitabong kaayuhan alang sa imong mga samad. 
mahil, mahilabihan ang imong mga samad. Ang matag-usa nga makadungog sa balita, bahin kanimo, mupakpak sa ilang makamot sa kalipay diha kanimo. Kinsabay makaikyas sa imong makanunayon nga pagkadautan. Okay. So what do you mean by this one? God is telling the Assyrians, there is no relief for a breakdown. There is no one to rescue. Walay makatabang kanino. Ang imong samad, di na matambal. Okay? All who hear the report, ang mga lain nasod, nakadungog, unsan na hitabo ninyo, napildi mo sa imong kaaway, mupalakpak sila, mulipay sila tanan. Nga na mulipay mo sila. Kay sobrang brutal and sobrang sama ng Assyrians because whenever they conquer other people, they will kill, behead people. And then, once na sila na po nagipildihan sa laing tao, malipay yun ang mga tao. Yehe, wala na mo. Kasi sobrang sama ninyo. So, for on whom has not your evil passed continually. So, bisan asa mo, you, kamo mga Assyrians, you cause a lot of pain to other people and other people would be happy when you are finally destroyed. Okay? You are finally destroyed. So the question is, nahitabo ba yun ni in history? Yes. Actually, yes. Like I said, Nineveh fell to the Medes and Babylonians. Um, they fell to the Medes and Babylonians. Napil di sila. Eventually. And then, uh, uh, dili, unti, uh, dili one time, but after several years, eventually, na wipe out ang Assyrian Empire. There's no Assyrian Empire right now. Okay? Um, by the way, Assyria uh, is now part of modern-day Iraq. Okay? So, there's no Assyrian Empire. If you notice in the book of uh, Nahum, there's no mention about the Messiah. Okay? There's no mention about the book of Messiah. Kasi the, 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 ang intent ng book of Nahum is to provide comfort for the people of Israel. Kasi remember, during that time, they were invaded by the Assyrians. Nga nung i-invade man ni Assyrians, nga nung gitugutan man ni Lord na i-invade ang Israel ng mga Assyrians. Because the Israelites were committing sin of idolatry. Diba? Sobrang galit ni Lord. The Lord used the Assyrians to inflict punishment upon His people. Gitugutan ni Lord. But but ang mga Assyrians, they were so brutal, they were so uh, bloodthirsty, they overdid it. That's why the Lord pronounced judgment on Assyria that, Kamo, I will pronounce judgment on you. Eventually, you will be destroyed. And this will serve as a comfort to God's people. Why? Because so that God's people will know, Hala, wala tayo pabayaan ni Lord. Wala tayo pabayaan ni Lord. The Lord will take vengeance on us. And this serves as a encouragement to the people of God. Okay. So, we have ended the book of Nahum. The book of Nahum is a prophecy against Nineveh of Assyria, but this is not the first time. There's another book, Jonah. Jonah and book of Nahum, they should be read side by side. See, si Jonah, God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach repentance. That's around... Uh, uh, to preach repentance to Nineveh. And uh, same city. Ang difference is that sa Jonah, the Ninevites repented. Sa Nahum, they did not repent. And God eventually destroyed them. In the book of Jonah, this happened around, around 8th century BC. Whereas sa, Nineveh, uh, sa book of Nahum, this happened around 7th, 7th century BC. 100 years later. Nauna si Na, nauna ang naitabo sa Jonah, naghinusol ang Ninevites. 100 years later, uh, gisulutan ni Lord ang mga Ninevites sa Book of Nahum. Okay, and if you notice, the Book of Nahum ended with a question. Parang bitin ba? Bitin ba ang Book of Prophecy? Ang, ang last sentence ng Book of Nahum uh, uh, for on whom has not your evil passed continually? So it's a rhetorical question. Na, na pa ba mas labaw na kasama ni mo, Assyria? So that's a, that's a rhetorical question. And interestingly, if you look at the book of Jonah, 
Ang ending ni Jonah, question mark po. It's a question. If you look at Jonah chapter 4, verse 11, should I not have pity on Nineveh? So, the, the ending, the last sentence, the last verse of Jonah, and the last verse of Nahum, they both end with a question. In Jonah, God asks, should I not have mercy on Nineveh? In, in the book of Nahum, uh, is there anyone as evil as you, Nineveh? So what can we learn? God has given the Ninevites the chance to repent. Yes, they repented. They repented. But they wasted their repentance. Nibalik na sila sa ilang mga kasamaan. That's why, sabi ni Lord sa, sa book of Nahum, enough is enough. I've given you chance to repent. You did not grab the chance. You became worse. Now, I will not have pity on you. The time has come for me to judge you. What can we learn about the character of God? God is long-suffering. God is patient. God is patient. So makita nato sa New Testament, di ba? Dili ganan si Lord na silutan ta. Tagaan ta og chance. Mautupod na hitabo sa Ninive. Gitagaan sila og chance. The first time, they repented. After 100 years, wala na yun. Nigahay ang ilang kasing-kasing, gisulutan na yun sila ni Lord. So, um, Nahum's prophecy was intended to be a source of comfort to God's people. You know, Assyria was a source of their suffering. And God is telling His people, don't worry, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So, after learning this, no? after reading uh, the book of Nahum, how does this apply to us? Okay, number one. Okay, number one. Ang lesson ane is, we have to repent. Huwag tayo matigas ulo. While it's true na, yes, uh, there was time na, diba, nagrepenta, we accepted the Lord, we repent, but eventually nagbackslide, careful ta. Because just like Assyria. Di ba okay si Assyria before? Di okay sila eh. Uh, pero nawala sila. So careful ta na dili ta mawala kang Lord because you know, na, may hangganan ang pasensya ni Lord. There will come a time that God will say enough is enough. I'm going to punish these people. I'm going to punish you. In the same way, right now, if you can see the world, no? Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He came, He died for our sins. All we have to do is to believe in Him, trust in Him. And then sabi ni Lord, I will come back soon. Pero if you look at it, 2,000 years have passed, wala pa lagi nibalik si Lord. Daghan ng, ng, ng sote, ah, di na siguro siya mabalik kay dugay na kayo. But if you come to think of it, di ba maayupod na wala pa siya nibalik? Kay napatay chance na maghinusol a chance to repent. There's still chance for us to go back to the Lord. And that's that's the beauty. I mean, that's the character of God. Sobrang pasensyoso ni Lord. Na dili siya, as much as possible, He will give us the chance to go back to Him. So, may we take this opportunity to reflect. To reflect. Number one, if you do not have the Lord, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have to repent because we know that Jesus is coming again. And when He comes back, what will happen? Judgment. There will be judgment. There will be no more time for repentance. And then, there will be yung, yung mga, there will be a separation of the goat from the, from the sheep. No? Ihiwalay niya kung kisa ang iyaha ug dili. And ang akong prayer is that dapat sana kita tanan, no? dito ta sa iyaha. Kay kung wala ta dito sa iyaha, kung may tabo na to. The Bible says that the unbelievers or the evildoers, they will be thrown in the lake of fire where there will be eternal punishment. Just like the Assyrians, judgment is certain, sure to come. The second coming of Jesus is sure to come. The question is when? What a kabalo. In the case of the Assyrians, 
Nahum gave the prophecy several years or even decades before the actual happening. Now, we do not know when the Lord is coming, but the, the, the challenge is dapat sige ta mag-andam. Okay, what a kabalo ka nasa. Sige ta mag-andam. Because uh, we should not be like the Assyrians na we will be caught with our pants down. No? Parang, wala tayo mahimo, wala tayo mahimo na pag-abot ng judgment, there is no more escape. That's why, now is the day of God's grace. Judgment is imminent. We do not know when. Sabi ni Lord in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's all come back to the Lord in repentance. Come back to the Lord. And make sure, sabi ni 2 Peter 1.10, Be eager to make your calling and election sure, because he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 10, 22. May we, not, uh, may we remain strong that we will not waste our repentance just like the Ninevites. That we will remain strong and standing until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So can we all please stand? Let's pray. Lord, salamat Lord sa imong pulong, O God. Thank you Lord for the book of Nehom wherein you pronounce judgment on Assyria or Nineveh. Lord, makita namo sa imong pulong, Lord, how serious you are to sin. How serious you are to unrepentant sin. You hate sin so much and the wages of sin is death. Makita namo, Lord, na galit na galit kay kasalanan and na ay kaparusahan ang kasalanan, Lord. That's why, Lord, nangay mi upasaylo, Lord, ask your forgiveness, O God, have mercy on us for the many times that we have failed you. Lord, we know dili na mo kaya maluwas ang among kaugalingon, Lord. That's why we need your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray have mercy on us, Lord God. We pray through the blood of the Lamb. Forgive us, O God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. We put our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, tabangi mi, Lord, from this day forward that we will live a life that is pleasing unto you, Lord God. Lord, tabangi mi, Lord, kikabalo mi, Lord, na kami weak mi, Lord. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, that you will give us the strength to go on, O God, to live holy lives, O God, to be prepared, to be ready for your coming because your judgment is certain. It's just a matter of time. Salamat, Lord. And I pray, O God, that when you come, you will not find us sleeping, O God, but instead, that you will find us faithful, O God, na maging faithful may makita may, Lord, pag-abot ninyo na kami naglakaw gid may sa imong presensya, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that um, that you will give us the strength, O God, to live a life according to your will. Salamat, Lord. Amoy hatag tanan tanan sa imong kamot, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, all this we pray, the Church of God says, Amen.